airlifted to the hospital where doctors work to stabilize her and relieve the swelling on her spinal cord. After months in the hospital, Jen was given a grim prognosis. I had a doctor sit down about a week later and said, this is the bottom line. You're going to be a quadriplegic for the rest of your life. You're not going to work, you're not going to recreate, you're going to live off of Social Security, and you better get used to it. Unwilling to accept what the doctor had told her, Jen decided not to let her disability dictate how she would live her life. I was back out doing sports before my one-year anniversary of my injury, which is a big, it's a big milestone for a lot of people with spinal cord injury. My one-year anniversary, I went back to the same ski resort and got on a sit-ski and went out skiing. And I think that was a big emphasis for me to say I can get back on the horse again. And that was only the beginning for Jen. During Hannah's competition, she usually competes against other disabled athletes. But sometimes during her swimming events, some of her contenders are able-bodied. So how does Hannah feel about whether or not she's at an advantage or a disadvantage with the other swimmers? It feels great because it doesn't really matter to me because I know so much about swimming. So to me, I just do it and then I just do the best I can. Tatiana was born with spina bifida, which is an opening in the spine that causes the messages being sent to the brain to be blocked. Being an athlete has helped Tatiana build her confidence. It has also helped to break down stereotypes of people in wheelchairs. I think it makes me like a stronger person, and I'm so thankful for my life now. Tatiana's always been a kid that nothing's ever held her back. I mean, when she was first adopted, she basically had to work, walk on her arms. She didn't have a wheelchair. When you work hard for one thing, and you go and compete, and you know that that hard work is paying off, it's kind of like an enjoyment you feel about yourself, about everybody, about personally yourself feeling that you can do this and how far you can go. Juan suffers from an unknown disability which is similar to spina bifida in that it blocks the nerve messages to his legs. Not a big difference between disabled and everybody because if you can swim, everybody's free on the water. Just that they're faster doesn't mean you cannot go as fast as them. You're just willing to try and keep partying, try to catch up to them. So that, is, that also inspires me. And I, I really don't, don't think that being disabled or being able-bodied, there's a lot, lot of difference, really. I think that it's just all in your mind. While experiencing the medical hurdles that Justin was going through, Peggy felt helpless. I remember waking up that night. I was in the um, waiting room outside the intensive care and I had fallen asleep and I woke up to everybody running down the hall. And I got up and I was able to peek through the window of the um, intensive care unit and they were all around his bed. And, I, and that was probably the worst moment right then because there, there's nothing I could do. It wasn't until he was playing a Tony Hawk video game that he felt interested in actually taking up this sport. Everybody in my neighborhood just started skateboarding and stuff like that. So I just kind of first joined to just be like them. So. One thing led to another, people started falling out, people started, you know, not really into it, but as I progressed in the video games, it wanted, or it made me more and more interested in skateboarding. Justin has been skateboarding now for about six years. What he finds thrilling and exciting about skateboarding is the challenges. Each time Justin gets on his board, he faces a different challenge and he doesn't do the same thing every day. Spinal muscular atrophy, it means that I can, in my opinion, think a lot quicker than other people and also not have to worry about walking. I don't have to worry about tripping over a rock, I'll just run over the rock and it's done. So it means actually more ability and easier ways to reach my goals. Kids that have spinal muscular atrophy, just literally because of the genetics of the disease, tend to be a little bit more uh, academically gifted because it's not a disease that affects anything other than 
the muscles. There is no additional thinking that goes into what he has to do every day. So where other kids have to worry about balancing 24-7 and skipping and walking and jumping and not tripping. Lessons taught early in life have molded Ben to be who he is today. I don't ever get sad about being in a wheelchair or anything other than getting ripped off in a power wheelchair soccer game. He makes even the worst day a good, good day. After Charlie's accident, he was determined to live and make the best of it. As he was going through the rehab process, he met Dwayne Johnson, a paraplegic who was very athletic and very outgoing. Charlie's attitude was changed forever. He flew his own plane, he played wheelchair basketball, and he really struck a chord in me, and I just, from then on, I felt that I could, I could do a lot more than what they were saying. After Charlie met Dwayne, he had seen improvement in his therapy and was more optimistic about his outcome. I really was going all out with physical therapy. I ended up getting, I was the first quadriplegic they ever added long leg braces for and crutches. <laughs> they said, this is crazy, but we're gonna, you know, you've gone through all the, uh, the uh, exercises we had for quads. In 1971, Charlie was feeling the competitive bug and wanted to get involved in sports and be with other disabled individuals. He competed nationally and would medal in pentathlon, javelin, shot put, discus, slalom, swimming, and track events, usually taking silvers and golds in up to eight events at each annual meet. Each year he also would enter in the rowing event and would win top medals. One of the things about an athlete is they have to overcome limitations, and if you can overcome, like a, like a, like a runner has to run a certain distance, or a jumper has to jump a certain height, or weightlift has to lift a certain weight, well, those are all limitations, and if you can overcome them, well, a, a handicapped person has to come, overcome limitations every day, so, so if you're an athlete, you're much more able to handle some of these other limitations. My heart told me things didn't seem right. Um, I just felt it. Um, I wasn't sure I could put my finger on it, but I felt it. Uh, when I held him, I felt it. He felt different to me. About 12 months old, 13 months old, he really stopped um, almost stopped communicating at all. He wasn't responding that much and he wouldn't look at us. And, he, and also he had some odd behaviors like some twitching. Like he would be sitting as a little baby and he would start yeah. doing like jerky movements. And that worried me. I said that to the doctor but they ignored me. Seeing Logan in a different environment, um, being observed by somebody, we were all in a small little room and just watching him, what he was doing, it was like, there really might be something wrong. And she said, I mean, initially at that very first meeting, she said there might be red flags for autism. It was a very surreal experience to walk out of the doctor's office to have confirmed something that you were afraid to have confirmed. And I remember um, standing in the parking lot and uh, just, not knowing what to do next because you walk out with a diagnosis but then there's not a list of of what to do and what to do first or who to call i don't think i really heard what the doctor said um, i think he was gently trying to ease into diagnosis label but i think all in all i just blocked it out i didn't want to hear it Dr. Monnier remembers back to when he first started to treat Levi. He had issues with the socialization. Um, his mom was telling me that he had no friends at all, and obviously that was a concern to her. Uh, he had issues with handwriting. He could not hold a pencil, which is a very common, uh, uh, common issue. He could not hold a pencil, could not draw, could not write. Uh, he was delayed in his reading in that he is nine years old. He could not read. Soon after beginning the hemispheric integration therapy, Levi started to show great improvements in his development. I can tell you that one of the best were the dinosaur ones. 
were these dinosaur ones. Now, um, this one was one of the best because that's where I started to realize that there was sky there. Most children with learning difficulties have deficits with critical elements of brain function, such as timing, planning, and sequencing abilities that are essential to academic achievement. Thank you.